and as part of this CBS 42 News investigation, I traveled there to find out why the same rare eye melanoma turned up in at least five people who either attended or worked at Auburn University at or around the same time. Tonight, what's been done to get answers? You can look, but you can't see, even if you focus very closely on Lori Lee's eyes. What's going on inside them is invisible to the naked eye. If you wanted to talk to them for a little bit now. It stems from something doctors suspect happened decades ago when Lori attended Auburn University back in 1985 through 89. Strange, kind of eye-opening, what in the world could have been. There is no known cause. You just, you know, I was basically told I had probably a better chance of winning the lottery than, than getting this because it is so rare. These days, she travels regularly here to this NCI-designated hospital in Philadelphia for treatment of a mysterious cancer discovered in her eye. It's called uveal melanoma. It typically affects five to six people in every one million, about two to 3,000 people in the U.S. each year usually men in their 60s. This lab inside the Sydney Kimmel Cancer Center at Thomas Jefferson University is where they study the rarest of the rare eye melanomas. Five cases from the Auburn community got their attention. I made it a habit really of asking, especially my new patients, especially my new young women patients, just casually, do you know anyone with this disease? Oncologist Dr. Marlana Orloff started that practice after their investigation in Huntersville, North Carolina, found more than 20 women within a 15-mile radius who were diagnosed with the same rare cancer that Lori is living with because it's a rare disease and you don't expect people to know someone. But someone did in our state. We did have someone down um, in Alabama who actually mentioned, oh yeah, actually, two girls that I went to college with were also diagnosed with this rare cancer. And so really that's kind of what started our suspicion, our investigation into potentially what could be, what could be happening. And if it's truly that most of these patients in Alabama were located extremely close in, in time and space. That makes things kind of a, of a tighter group. Um, North Carolina, you know, the patients did not necessarily live on the, you know, same block. Depending on the type of testing that would need to be done, sometimes you can find traces of this or that. From what we're hearing from, from some people in Alabama is that certainly the patients that may have been affected were living very, very close together um, over a very short period of time. This is very strange. We have a couple of, start looking around, you know, we're asking, keep asking the same question, where do you uh, leave? Dr. Takami Sato is a professor of medical oncology at the Sydney Kimmel Cancer Center at TJU and a pioneer in treatments for metastatic uveal melanoma. I found the two male patients, one of them uh, went to the same university. And then uh, the other one, uh, worked on campus <laughs> at around the same time uh, these uh, patients uh, lived in the same dormitory. One of those males is believed to be Mark McWilliams. His widow, Susan Roberts McWilliams, first informed CBS 42 of the suspicious occurrence of this rare cancer in Auburn during our CBS 42 Local War on Cancer special report in 2017. So that's five. Yeah. So now our uh, numbers are increasing, you know. So, but this doesn't mean uh, there is something there. What Dr. Sato and Orloff told me it does mean is there needs to be more investigation. We are making an effort to go down to Alabama um, in the or in early February, hopefully to engage the community down there, not just the university, but the, but the community. Your team is going into Auburn mm -hmm. to alert people that Something not, not a lot, uh, just uh, uh, you know, inform, inform them, yes, inform yes, them yes, yes, on, on why it would be mm -hmm. a good idea mm -hmm. to have regular eye exams at this point. That's a one thing. Also, if uh, you know, uh, uh, people who live uh, there can give us some hint, you know, Dr. Sato, Dr. Olof, I think that this might be uh, one thing that you have to look into. Lori Lee will be there. What I would like to see happen, to be able to come up with a reason why we're all getting this and find some more of the people that could be in that group and get them the help that they need. Until then, in between travel for treatment with her oncologist here at Sydney Kimmel, there's some investigating to do. This wife and mother is doing what she can and appreciating all that she can 
including her alma mater and her creator. The sky may be a little bluer and a little oranger sometimes. <laughs> Until there's a cure. Auburn University declined an on-camera interview for our story, but they did give us this statement, which reads in part, the university encourages spreading the word about uveal melanoma and all types of cancer and the need for early detection, and it welcomes the cancer researchers looking into this rare cancer. Our understanding is the scientific community has not yet established what causes it, and there is no known casual connection that would indicate any student or employee in danger. They go on to say that the university would would act immediately if it knew of any unsafe condition on campus. Now you can read their full statement on our CBS 42 News app. It's there for you right now. I love her spirit. Uh, the sky a little more orange, a little bit more blue. They don't want to panic people, but the team is coming to Alabama. Who's going to be there and what's going to be going on? So it's everybody you saw in that story. Those researchers, some of the patients in our area who have uveal melanoma. But Auburn University told me that they do plan to send a representative from their risk management to that meeting. And I talked to the city of Auburn. They, too, plan to send someone there to the meeting to get information so they can get an, an understanding about that meeting and as for when the meeting is it is Saturday February 10th at the Auburn Hotel and Conference Center. CBS 42 news anchor Sherry Jackson live on the plains with a team of researchers from Philadelphia that she first told you about in her investigative report last week and Sherry they're still in town tonight right? Jack they are and it is a rainy night in Auburn you can see the clouds but a lot of people we met with today are hoping for a silver lining they met in a room for two hours today all of the stakeholders involved in the uveal melanoma cases that have been discovered here in Auburn many people we talk with especially those who are living with this disease are hoping that they can find an answer to what's going on they lined up and signed up well before the 10 o'clock hour. Anxious to learn about this rare cancer diagnosis being found in more and more people with ties to Auburn University alumni. Those living with uveal melanoma. Hey, I was diagnosed in 2005. And families of those who've lost loved ones to it, like the McWilliams. <laughs> CBS 42 started this investigation in 2017 when Susan Roberts McWilliams informed us of her late husband's uveal melanoma diagnosis and other cases found in people who attended Auburn University. Draw attention to it, see if we could get researchers interested in seeing what they could find out about any kind of connection down here. Once inside, those curious about what's going on with this rare cancer first listen to the team of researchers from Philadelphia um, and therefore we've come up with a little bit of an alternative strategy to try. then ask questions local optometrist dr. David Olive my question was not knowing what if anything the university has done at this point uh, just what type of cooperation is is um, is being had between them and the doctors from Philadelphia. Ashley McCrary is one of the uveal melanoma patients who lives in Auburn. She attended the university from 1989 to 93. So you mentioned that you have talked to the university. Yes, they have been wonderful. Um, I've, I've actually reached out to them three different times, and each time I've got an immediate response within the same day or even within the hour. Um, I was told that they've developed a task force and that the risk management lady that was here um, is, is definitely heading that up. I spoke with Dr. Christine Ike, who's the director of Auburn's Office of Risk Management and Safety. The university reached out to the individual who posted it on Facebook and said um, very clearly that if there was um, if there was anything that was deemed investigative in the federal or the state organizations and those uh, got involved, we would cooperate fully. Um, it's it's really not a myth, the Auburn family. We really do care, and, and we always do right by each other, or we try to. That's what the people in this room are counting on, people like Susan Wonderlich, who was diagnosed with uveal melanoma a year ago. Five or six people that I know of have had it, and then they know somebody. I mean, I was just was hoping to find out how many people had it because it is not rare. It's not rare here. No, it's not rare. Everybody we know has it. No, not everybody we know, but a lot of people have it. I, I was concerned about saying this today, but now I feel like people need to hear. We, we're up to 19 people that I have all their contact information. Then I met three people today that were not on that list. And then Dr. Mock was here today and said, you know, I've been treating what 
did he say, nine people in the Lee County area? And I think this is a, a community that, you know, had concern that something was going on. It sounds like they're going to be engaged. You know, our hope is that, you know, we kind of take the information that we learned today to try to move forward in a similar fashion as we've done it in North Carolina.